What's up guys? I've been wanting to make this video for a while ever since I looked into Solana after seeing it rapidly rise over the past couple of weeks. But with the recent events of the Solana network going completely down for an extended period of time, I figured there's no better time than now to make this video. I just want to quickly say that this is not financial advice. These opinions are my own. Do with them what you will. In short, the problem with Solana is its validators. These problems include the hardware requirements of running a validator, as well as the high cost of even running a profitable validator. Additionally, Solana uses a proof-of-stake consensus algorithm rather than a proof-of-work algorithm. Why I mention this is because Solana's wealth is already highly concentrated and will become even further concentrated in the future. Let's now explore some of the topics I briefly mentioned. In the Solana docs, we can see the hardware requirements here. You need a very high-end machine, 12 core CPU, 2.8 gigahertz, 128 gigabytes of RAM with a motherboard that supports double that. The cost of a machine like this is well into the thousands of dollars. Without looking into it too closely, I would estimate this to be at least $3,000 to make a machine like this. They do have other options though. Alternatively, we can run a Google Cloud instance or the equivalent of an N2 Standard 32 machine. To run a machine like this along with the needed SSD space is at least a few dollars an hour, which can add up when you consider that you need to run your validator 24 seven. Meanwhile, the hardware requirements for a Ethereum or Cardano validator are much lower much closer to that of a normal desktop PC. If the only cost of running a Solana validator was the hardware, while these requirements are very high, it may be forgivable. However, that is not the only requirement. If we scroll back up, we can see that in addition to these hardware requirements, the validator must pay the vote transaction cost, which can add up to around 1.1 sol per day. This fact alone raises the cost of running a Solana validator to hundreds of dollars per day. Here we have a spreadsheet that does the math for us to see exactly how much Solana we need to actually break even, let alone make a profit. At the time of recording, the price of Solana is roughly at $158. The economics, including the price, can change with Solana, but the overall picture stays the same. So here we have the hardware costs, and this assumes that it costs roughly $3,000 in hardware and $3,000 in network costs per year. It assumes that we are having third-party stake, which means that people give us our Solana and we stake it for them, and we charge a 7% commission on that. This spreadsheet, which I did not originally make and will link down below, originally put in that we have $200,000 of third-party stake. That means Solana that people have given to us to stay for them. Given these circumstances and costs, we make out pretty well. We make around $300 a day, around $800 an Epic, and over $100,000 a year. However, if you haven't already realized it, this requires us to have millions of dollars. Not $200,000, but 200,000 Sol. So how much is 200,000 Solana? Well, at the time of recording, 200,000 Solana is over $31 million. This means, in this scenario, in order to make the money that we just went over per day, per year, we need people to give us $31 million to stake. We are effectively a small bank at this point. However, if our goal was to just break even, how much money would we need? Well, it says here, the break even minimum stake is 80,772. So let's go ahead and type this in. 80,772. So that means that in order to just break even running a validator, we would need people to collectively lend us $12 million of their Solana in order for us to stake it for them. How do you go ahead about attracting people to stake their money with you? Well, you can run ads and the like, but that will increase your cost. You could lower your commission to say 4%, but then that then raises the required minimum stake amount to just break even. So I think you can see the predicament here. Of course, when you stake your own soul, you don't need as much of it to break even. So let's go through this scenario where you're a wealthy individual, 
how much money do you need to put into Solana before you break even without third party help? So to do this, we'll go ahead and change the third party stake to zero. And we'll see that under this unrealistic situation, we would be losing almost $70,000 a year. But let's gradually increase our self stake. So first a thousand, still losing money, 2000, still losing money, 4000, still losing money. And we have invested over half a million dollars of our own money at this point. Let's do 6000. Oh, okay. 6,000, nearly a million dollars. 6,000 Solana, nearly a million dollars. We are finally about breaking even. We're making $6 a day. In most circumstances, we'll be between the two extremes, having 100% third party stake and 100% self stake. But self stake will be the lowest level of capital investment to break even. So the minimum cost of running a profitable Solana validator is nearly a million dollars. Compared to Ethereum, where the minimum amount of stake Ethereum for a validator is 32, and the current cost is roughly 3,500, Solana is roughly 10x more expensive to just break even running a validator. Keep in mind, this $100,000 staked with Ethereum, once Ethereum 2.0 goes live, is already profitable. Meanwhile, Solana, with 10x the cost, will be roughly breaking even. And of course, other people can pool their Ethereum with your validator, which would further bring down your cost of running an Ethereum validator. So as I've shown, the cost of running a Solana validator is very high. This fact alone leads to a highly centralized blockchain network. While not as centralized as a bank, of course, it is much closer to a bank with smart contracts than Cardano or Ethereum is. And having a more centralized blockchain has its cost. Recently, during excessive use of the Solana network, memory consumption increased, causing some nodes to go offline. Enough nodes are taking offline that the validation of the transactions on the network can no longer be done, bringing the network down. In a decentralized network, if nodes go down, it's not a big deal because enough nodes are continuing to run, allowing the network to be validated and keeping the network alive even as nodes drop out. Looking at Solana Beach, if the top 20 validators in the network were taken offline, Solana would halt again. So in the worst case scenario, where the only affected nodes are the top nodes, it would take less than 2% of the nodes going down to bring down Solana. Of course, the worst case scenario is not the most likely scenario, but still, say if 10% of the Solana nodes went down at random, would the Solana network go down? It is much more likely to be the case that that is what would happen than a more decentralized network. Further hurting Solana in the area of centralization is the allocation of current and future tokens to its insiders. As we can see here, roughly 48% of the Solana tokens are or will be allocated to the development team, the company, and venture capital firms. Solana being centralized to insiders poses a problem due to the fact that accumulated wealth is unlikely to become less centralized over time, rather proof of stake algorithms tend to centralize wealth. So as we can see throughout the entire video, Solana is not very decentralized. That may be worth it to some people, but as we can see, that can lead to the network being down. And if you have very critical applications on the network, that is not acceptable. Decentralization has its cost. Ethereum has its high gas fees, while Solana and Binance have much lower fees. However, being decentralized, in my opinion, is a key aspect of a blockchain. If you're not decentralized, having your platform on a blockchain is not nearly as compelling. 
So those are some of my thoughts on the Solana blockchain. I hope, if nothing else, you found this video informative, even if you disagree with me. If you learned something, consider leaving a like. Additionally, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I cover many tech-related topics such as crypto, AI, and more. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching, and please have a great day.